Chapter 21 Late Nights Tommy ended up sleeping through the rest of the day. He woke up long after the sun had gone down, with his mouth feeling like the literal desert. The water glass on his nightstand was empty, and he groaned internally at the realization that he was going to have to get up to fill it. Tubbo was dead to the world, snoring with his legs thrown over Tommy's and his head resting on Ronbu's stomach. Tommy had no idea how he even got in such a strange position in his sleep. But it was Tubbo. There was usually a lot of unexplained stuff going on with him. Thankfully for Tommy, though, Tubbo wouldn't wake up even if Tommy smacked him in the face with a pillow, which was something he had tried before. So he was able to shove Tubbo's legs off of him without disturbing the boy's snores, and stumbled out of the bed and to his feet without much issue. Well, except for the fact that he was fucking sore. His entire body ached, which wasn't exactly surprising. But it was a pain in the ass. His ribs screamed in protest with every step he took, so he ended up holding onto the wall as he slowly made his way down the stairs and towards the kitchen. He crept down as silently as he could, listening just in case he heard footsteps either above or below him. It wasn't like he was afraid of running into Wilbur or anything. No way. Not at all. He just would rather avoid that confrontation at the moment, if he could. The kitchen light was off, and the stove clock told Tommy it was nearly 2 a.m. Great. His sleep schedule was fucked up now. At least the kitchen was empty. Grumbling under his breath about how this was going to make his shifts hell if he couldn't get his sleeping back on track, he set his cup down on the counter and opened the fridge to take out the water pitcher. When he closed the fridge, he nearly screamed when he closed it to find Techno standing on the other side. Tommy yelped, clutching a hand to his chest. Give man's a fucking heart attack, why don't you? Oh, sorry about that. Techno apologized, taking a step back. I thought you were Tubbo or Ronbu. It was still weird for Tommy to remember that the Soots knew Tubbo and Ronbu now. He hadn't actually seen any of them interact, but they'd been staying at the house since they all rescued Tommy. He wondered if they were all awkwardly formal with one another, or if they were actually becoming friends. He always thought that Ronbu and Techno especially would get along. And despite the shitfest that was his relationship with the Soots right now, he couldn't help but hope there was some kind of friendship there. No, it's just me, Tommy replied, turning around to pour the water into his cup. I see that, Techno said flatly. He'd gotten used to Techno being less awkward around him over his past month staying at the house, so it was strange to see Techno be so unsure now. Are you, uh, feeling any better? Still feel pretty shit, if I'm being honest, Tommy said, taking a sip of the water and sighing in relief as the desert in his mouth washed away. I'm super fucking sore. Yeah, that tends to happen when you break all your bones. Techno deadpanned. Tommy let out a surprised laugh. You know, that's a good point. My bones really did just kind of go snap, crackle, pop now, didn't they? Techno huffed, as if he was trying to hide a smile. Don't say it like that, you'll give the old man a heart attack. At the mention of Phil, Tommy's smile faded as he thought back to their conversation a little bit before he was kidnapped. How Phil mentioned thinking of him like a son, and Tommy thinking that even if he wasn't there yet, he could see Phil becoming a father figure to him. That... that had been real, right? Phil wouldn't have needed to say that just for the act. It wouldn't make any sense. As if on cue, another set of footsteps came towards the kitchen, and Tommy barely got time to prepare himself before Phil was rounding the corner. Techno, where did you- Phil cut himself off when he made eye contact with Tommy, and Tommy froze with his water cup halfway to his mouth. They looked at each other for a few moments, Blue eyes, meeting blue, in an unblinking stare-down. Uh, hi, Phil. Tommy said after a moment, setting down his water cup. It was like hitting the play button on a paused TV. 
Phil was suddenly rushing forward, and Tommy didn't even get to open his mouth again before Phil was wrapping his arms around him and pulling him close. Shit, it's so good to see you awake, Phil muttered, hugging him tight enough to the point where Tommy almost wanted to ask Phil to loosen up because it was hurting his ribs. Almost. Instead of trying to pull away, Tommy found himself melting into the hug. He wasn't sure why. This was Zephyrus. The Zephyrus was hugging him after having lied to him for months. But it was also Phil. Phil, who taught him how to play Halo with a seemingly endless amount of patience. Phil, who always had coffee ready for him in the morning. Phil, who affectionately called him a little shit and would smack Wilbur upside the head whenever he tried to convince Tommy that he needed to eat sand. Besides, it's not like Phil, or Techno for that matter, had lied to him as much as Wilbur had. For the most part, the two of them had just kept their identities a secret. And yeah, he wasn't sure where he stood at the moment regarding the syndicate and their way of doing things, but he could let himself just have a hug from Phil for the moment, right? They stayed like that for a few moments, Phil holding on to Tommy with the same kind of relief that Tommy had always imagined parents had when they lost their kids in a mall, only to be reunited with them a few minutes later thanks to a friendly security guard. Uh... Phil, you might not want to hug him so hard. The kid's a bit sore. Techno eventually chimed in. Almost instantly, Phil's arms relaxed and he pulled away, and Tommy was both relieved that his ribs were no longer aching, but also found himself missing Phil's warmth. Sorry about that, Phil said, taking a breath to steady himself. I just got a little overwhelmed for a second seeing you up and about again. It's okay. Tommy said, folding his arms over his chest as he leaned against the counter. I didn't mind. Phil's face softened at that, and Techno shot him a teasing look. Don't even start. I'm allowed to be glad my- Phil cut himself off abruptly, glancing at the ground. I'm allowed to be glad Tommy's back, so don't be a little shit, Tech. Techno huffed. You're such a sappy old man. Oh, fuck off. Phil rolled his eyes. Anyway, Tommy, what are you doing awake? It's pretty late, mate. I got thirsty. Tommy shrugged, pointing to the water pitcher behind him. Well, it's good for you to stay hydrated, so drink as much as you can. Phil said, nodding in approval. Tommy snorted at how much of a dad he sounded like there, but decided not to voice that thought. There was an awkward silence that fell over the three of them then. Tommy took a long sip of his water, waiting to see if Phil and Techno were going to keep trying to talk to him, or if they were going to leave him be. Techno shuffled over to the cabinet, pulling out a bag of chips. Phil seemed as though he wanted to say something else to Tommy, but wasn't sure how to go about it. Finally. I think you know. We owe you an apology, Tommy. Phil said, folding his arms over his chest Tommy wasn't sure what he had expected Phil to say, so he just nodded at that, figuring it was best to let him continue. You didn't want to get involved in our problem, and we kind of forced you in anyway. And then you came here to stay with us, not knowing that you were just getting even more caught up in the villain bullshit than you already were. Phil explained, glancing at the ground. We thought it was better to keep you in the dark about our identities. But in the end, it didn't really matter. You still got hurt. Tommy frowned. I mean, dream kidnapping me wasn't your fault. I should have been more careful. It was our fault. Techno cut in. We had an obligation to keep you safe, and we didn't figure out what was going on until it was too late. There were a lot of ways we could have been smarter about this whole deal, and you were the one who had to deal with the consequences. Falling silent, Tommy wrapped his arms around himself, one question burning in his mind. He didn't want to ask it, terrified of what the answer was going to be. But at the same time, he knew it was going to eat away at his mind unless he found out the truth. Did... did you guys ever actually care about me? He whispered, keeping his eyes on the floor. Or did you just agree to let me stay here because you could keep a better eye on your healer? 
Phil sucked in a sharp breath at that. Oh, oh, Tommy, no, how could you even think that? He asked, something like hurt dripping from his tone as he stepped towards Tommy. Of course we care about you. I wasn't lying when I said what I said that day in my office. Fuck. It was exactly what Tommy wanted to hear, but how could he even be sure it was true? You don't have to lie, Tommy said, squeezing his arms around himself tighter. I'm not going to stop healing you guys if you tell me the truth. Suddenly, there were warm hands on his face, and his head was being tilted up to meet Phil's eyes. We're not lying, Phil said, meeting his gaze steadily. I don't give a shit if you decide you never want to heal any of us again, and I wouldn't try to stop you if you wanted to cut us off entirely. But if you're worried about what we think of you, I hope you know I consider you just as much mine as Will and Techno are. Tommy's breathing hitched as another warm hand was placed on his shoulder, and he saw Techno giving him a pained look. It wasn't fake. Techno reassured him. We all care about you, Tommy. Tears burned in the corners of Tommy's eyes, and he found himself leaning into Phil and Techno's gentle touches. What? What about Will? He whispered, his heart pounding. Did he just befriend me because I healed him? I think that's a conversation you need to have with Will himself, but I can tell he loves you so much, Toms. Phil told him, pulling him into another hug. He was an absolute wreck when you got taken from us. He's been hiding in his room since you woke up, because he doesn't think you'll want to see him. Tech now explained, squeezing his shoulder. But before that, when you were still passed out, we couldn't get him away from your room. Even when we kept telling him you had healed yourself, he was convinced you were going to stop breathing or something. Shit. Had Wilbur really been that worried? It sounded like him for sure. He didn't know anymore. But the sincerity in both Phil and Techno's voices right now made Tommy want to believe everything they were saying. He wanted to believe it so badly, that he wasn't just a tool, that he actually meant something to them. Still, he needed to talk to Wilbur. But maybe not right now, considering it was the middle of the night. Okay. Tommy muttered, pulling away from Phil's hug. Thanks. Of course, mate, Phil said, dropping his arms. You can take your time with this. I'm sure it's a lot to process. Tommy huffed. Yeah, you could say that again. You should probably go try to sleep some more. Techno then chimed in. You're still recovering, so you need to rest as much as you can. Resisting the urge to roll his eyes, Tommy refilled his water cup again, before putting the pitcher back in the fridge. You're such a mother hen, Techno, he grumbled. Techno narrowed his eyes. I'm not a mother hen. You totally are, Tommy shot back. Phil, the child is bullying me, Techno complained, shooting a pleading look Phil's way. Phil snorted. I don't know, Tech, you were the one checking his temperature and his pulse every hour when he was still sleeping. Phil, Techno whined the pleading look only getting stronger. Come on, I got a reputation. Aw, oh, Techno, were you worried about me? Tommy teased, giving Techno a shit-eating grin. You're such a fucking softy, man. Imagine if people knew the terrifying Blade himself was all motherly and shit. All the edgelords who worship you on Twitter would be heartbroken. Even if you exposed me on Twitter, no one would ever believe you. Techno joked, almost cracking a smile. Tommy pouted, and Phil chuckled. Well, Twitter aside, you really should be getting back to bed, Tommy, he said, putting a hand on Tommy's shoulder to guide him out of the kitchen. If you want to come down for breakfast in the morning, feel free, but Will will probably be there, so you can also just text me or Techno, and we'll come bring you something. Thanks, guys, Tommy said, shooting them both a small but grateful smile over his shoulder. Then, with one last look... Tommy headed back towards the stairs. He kept his steps as light as he could, but it was hard when his bones felt like they were filled with lead. Despite how awake he'd been before getting up, 
he was already starting to feel the exhaustion creeping over him once more. Damn. Had to make a mental note not to go and break all his bones again any time soon. Once he reached the third floor landing, he headed towards his room, but paused when he heard the soft click of a door shutting. Tommy whipped his head towards the sound, and his heart leapt in his throat when he saw it came from Wilbur's room. A soft, yellow glow was peeking out from under the door. Wilbur was still awake, and it seemed like he'd watched Tommy come up the steps before shutting the door so he didn't spot him. Tommy stared at the door for a moment, practically able to feel Wilbur standing on the other side, both of them holding their breath as they waited for Tommy to make his move. Tommy found himself in front of Wilbur's door, hand raised to knock against the wood. This was it. He could knock right now and ask the question that was burning a hole in his mind. He could ride off the high of how well things had gone with Techno and Phil and use the momentum to rip the band-aid off. But if Phil was wrong, and Wilbur really had just been using him, well, it was late, and Tommy was getting really tired now, he definitely wasn't in the best state to deal with that kind of pain. Was it an excuse to put the hard conversation off? Yes. Did he do the same thing with Tubbo and Ronbu? Also yes. So was he going to do it again? Absolutely. Letting out a deep sigh, Tommy dropped his hand and turned away from Wilbur's door. He ignored the eyes he felt on the back of his head as he headed back into his own room and slipped into the darkness as quietly as he could. He didn't look back as he shut the door behind him. Crawling into his bed again, Tommy grunted as he shoved Tubbo's legs to the side so he could stretch out again. As soon as he got settled, though, Tubbo huffed in his sleep, and his legs fell on top of Tommy's again. And Tommy only sighed, because he knew there was no way he was going to get Tubbo to move off of him when he was this deep in sleep. Somehow, though, despite Tubbo's legs resting heavily on his own, Tommy's fatigue was all too eager to pull him back under for more sleep. The next morning, Tommy woke to sunlight filtering in through the curtains, creating slanted shadows across his face. He blinked open his eyes and tried to turn on his side to grab more water, but paused when he felt a heavy weight on his shoulder. Tubbo had once again shifted in his sleep, now splayed out like a starfish with his limbs falling over both him and Ronbu. Fucking hell, Tubbo! Tommy grunted, trying to shove his friend off of him. Tubbo groaned. Five more minutes. He slurred, burying his face into Tommy's shoulder. No, Tubbo, move. Ronbu cut in, and Tommy glanced over to see the other boy staring at the ceiling with one of Tubbo's arms laying on top of his face. Fuck you, Tubbo grumbled. No, fuck you, you clingy bitch. Tommy shot back, reaching blindly behind him to smack Tubbo in the face. Also, Tubbo yelped, smacking the back of Tommy's head in retaliation. Hey, I'm the injured one here, Tommy argued, now turning around to face Tubbo. Tubbo finally moved his arms and legs off of Tommy and Ronbu, now fully awake, scowling at the two of them. He huffed as he sat up his hair sticking up in every direction, while Tommy stretched out in relief at finally being free. I hate you both, Tubbo mumbled, rubbing at his eyes with a closed fist. You love us, Ronbu teased, nudging Tubbo with his elbow. Tubbo rolled his eyes, but there was a sleepy grin spread across his face, so it kind of ruined his attempt at pretending to be annoyed. Instead of trying to argue with Ronbu, he instead turned to Tommy his eyes heavy with exhaustion. How are you feeling, Tommy? Tommy shrugged, sitting a bit straighter against the wall. I'm all right. Still kind of sore and shit, but better than yesterday. I could probably get up and do stuff and be fine. You should probably stay in bed today, Ronbu argued. Better to just get as much rest as you can. Well, that was a fair point. Tommy didn't exactly want to be up and about in the soothouse right now, just on the off chance he ran into Wilbur. But on the other hand, he was bored. Not to mention his stomach was growling like a motherfucker. 
Besides the pastries Puffy brought over yesterday, he hadn't felt like eating much, and it seemed like it was catching up to him. If you're gonna make me sit in bed like a fucking sickly Victorian kid or whatever, can you at least go get me food? Tommy asked, shooting a pleading look Ronbu's way. Can you get me some food too? I think Phil's making pancakes. Tubbo chimed in, matching Tommy's puppy dog eyes perfectly. Ronbu sighed at both of them. Why can't you go, Tubbo? Because I'm sleepy. Tubbo whined, leaning heavily against Tommy's shoulder. Plus, you should do nice things for your husband sometimes. You two still on about that whole getting married bit? Tommy asked, furrowing his brows. Not really, Ronbu said. But it's funny to call Ronbu my husband, Tubbo added. Tubbo, I'm not just going to do stuff for you because you say I'm a bad husband. What kind of man refuses to get his husband breakfast in bed? Tubbo asked, fluttering his lashes at Ronbu with far too much innocence to be genuine. Sighing again, Ronbu pinched the bridge of his nose. Fine, I'll go get you guys breakfast. Thanks, Boo. Tubbo grinned. Huffing, Ronbu disappeared in a flurry of purple particles, and Tommy jolted back in surprise. Obviously, he'd known that Tubbo and Ronbu were Nuke and Ender for quite a while now, but this was the first time the three of them had been spending time together since the reveal with Tubbo and Ronbu not in their vigilante outfits. Even though Tommy knew Ronbu could teleport, it was still strange to see Ronbu, his roommate, teleport out of his bedroom instead of Ender the Vigilante teleporting around. An old question that he'd had when the three of them first had their fight reappeared in his head. Why had Tubbo and Ronbu hidden their powers from him for so long? As far as he knew, they hadn't been Nuke and Ender for very long. So why had they kept their powers a secret from him the entire time they'd known him? Tubbo was quiet while Ronbu was gone, scrolling through his phone with his hair falling into his eyes. Tommy tried to do the same, absently looking through Twitter to see what was going on, but he couldn't actually focus on the words on his screen. Instead, all he could think of was how they'd known each other for years, how they'd known all about his own powers, yet neither of them had bothered disclosing theirs to him. Had they always planned to become vigilantes? Or was there some reason they hadn't trusted him even before Nuke and Ender came into the picture? Ronbu appeared back in the room a few minutes later, balancing a tray full of plates and cups. Each plate had two chocolate chip pancakes on it, along with three cups of coffee, all with varying levels of sugar and cream in them. Tommy's was the palest shade of brown, Ronbu's was somewhere in the middle, and Tubbo took his coffee black like a madman. Once they all had their food settled on their laps, Tommy tried to eat, but he couldn't ignore the nagging in the back of his head as the question turned itself over and over in his mind. If the air was really clear between the three of them now, it shouldn't hurt to ask. Hopefully. Uh, um, guys? Tommy started as he cut his pancake into tiny pieces, more so for something to do than to actually eat. Can I ask you something? Tubbo raised an eyebrow, the steam from his coffee curling around his face. What's up, boss man? Tommy took a breath, trying to figure out how to word the question. You guys have only been Nuke and Ender for, what, six months now? Uh, yeah, around there. Rambu nodded. Yeah, not long at all. Not long enough to justify having hid their powers from Tommy in the many past years they'd known each other. I mean, I guess I get it if you don't want to answer this, but, um, why... Why didn't you ever tell me about your powers? Like before you became new contender? Tommy asked, keeping his eyes fixed on his plate. There was a pause. Silence hung heavy in the air, and when Tommy glanced up through the hair falling over his face... He could see Tubbo and Ronbu exchanging uncertain looks. I thought we agreed no more secrets, Tommy complained, ignoring the way his heart clenched at seeing the two of them have another one of their silent conversations. No, Tommy, we're, n we're not trying to keep any more secrets from you at all, Ronbu rushed to explain, putting his coffee mug down. I guess, um, I'll go first, though. 
the truth is I didn't even know I had powers until, like, a month before we started the whole vigilante thing. Tommy blinked. What? Um, yeah, I know. Weird, right? But it's the truth. One day you were at the cafe on a shift and Tubbo and I were just hanging out at home when he decided to try and scare me as a prank. It worked. But I ended up teleporting myself across the room by accident, which was how I found out I could do that. He paused, picking at his nails. I was gonna tell you as soon as you got home, but Tubbo, uh, kinda convinced me not to. Tommy narrowed his eyes at Tubbo, wincing as a pang flashed through his chest. Tubbo? He prompted. Tubbo looked like he wanted to crawl into his coffee mug and hide. Uh, yeah, okay, I know that sounds bad, but I promise it had nothing to do with you. He tried to explain shrinking back against the pillows. I had already been thinking of doing the whole vigilante thing for a while at that point, so when I saw Ronbu had powers, I told him to keep it a secret because I wanted to see if he could train it and get better at it. Then I told him about my own powers and my plan to be a vigilante and asked if he wanted to do it with me. I wanted to keep you out of it because the whole not wanting to worry you shit that I told you before. It was fucking stupid in retrospect, but... Uh, yeah... It's my fault Rambu didn't tell you about his powers. Blinking, Tommy's shoulders dropped just a bit, knowing Rambu hadn't been keeping that huge of a secret from him for that long. But that still left Tubbo. Tubbo, who clearly had been keeping his secret for quite a long time. Why didn't you tell me about yours, though? Tommy asked, his voice small. Tightening his grip on his mug. Tubbo took a sip of his coffee. He was silent for a moment, and Tommy noticed his hands were shaking. I don't like my powers, he said quietly. I've gotten a bit less scared of using them recently, but for most of my life I tried to suppress them. Tommy frowned. Why? I found out about them when I was eight, Tubbo explained, shoulders hunching. It was my first foster home. I'd lived there since I was five, after I was found in that box that I told you about. Anyway, one day I was just messing around with my foster sister and then she shoved me and I got freaked out. Then my hands started glowing and the next thing I knew... Tubbo made a whoosh noise and mimed an explosion with his hands, making Tommy wince. Fuck, Tommy whispered. It's okay. It was a while ago. Tubbo brushed it off, although Tommy could see the regret swirling in his eyes. She lived, but she was pretty badly hurt. We were in the kitchen at the time, so it got written off as a gas explosion from the stove being left on, but I think my foster parents knew I had something to do with it, because they asked my social worker to take me away not long after that. Fuck. Tommy had thought he knew everything about Tubbo and Ronbu's histories in the foster system before the three of them got put together but apparently that wasn't the case. He didn't blame Tubbo for not telling him that, though. That was intense. It was at that moment that Tommy realized that even though they both had powers, Tommy was never going to understand what it was like to have a destructive power like that. The only thing Tommy could do with his power was help people. He didn't think he could hurt anyone with his ability even if he tried but seeing the mixture of fear and guilt swirling behind Tubbo's eyes like an ocean made him try to imagine what it would be like to constantly be afraid of what you were capable of. If one small lapse in control could lead to him killing someone. It had to be exhausting to worry about that all the time. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you talk about something you didn't want to, Tommy said. Dropping his eyes. Nah, it's okay. Tubbo shrugged. I told Ronbu the same story when I told him about my powers. You deserve to know the truth. Tommy nodded. I appreciate it. He murmured, taking a mechanical bite of his pancake. He chewed for a moment, mulling over the new information in his head, before another question came to him. But then why the whole fucking crime-fighting thing? I guess I just got sick of hearing all the hero bullshit on the news, Tubbo explained, perking up a bit at the change in topic. 
I knew I had a powerful ability that I could really fuck some people up with. And even if I didn't like using it, I felt like I should at least try to learn how to control it instead of just pretending like it didn't exist. And if I was able to help some people at the same time, then that was even better, you know? Yeah, I get it. Reaching out, Tommy rested a hand on Tubbo's shoulder and squeezed. Don't worry. I get it, big man. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about my powers earlier. I promise it wasn't that I didn't trust you or anything. I just didn't want to have to explain that whole thing to you guys. Tubbo said, giving Tommy a sad smile. It's fine. Like I said, I understand. Tommy nodded, the weight having lifted itself from his chest completely now. Anyway, enough of this depressing shit. You guys gotta try Phil's pancakes. These are the best fucking things you're ever gonna eat. Haven't gotten a chance to try Phil's cooking yet. So far, we've mostly just been eating Techno's potatoes. Ron Boo told him. Baked potatoes? Tommy asked. They nodded. The mashed potatoes? More nods. Potatoes au gratin, or however the fuck you say that. I think it's potatoes au gratin. And yes, he made those too. Ron Boo corrected him. It's not bad. Like, Techno's a really good cook, but I'm kind of relieved we're getting a break from potatoes. Tommy snorted. Try living with him for as long as I have. Tubbo rolled his eyes. Oh, poor Tommy, getting to live in this fancy-ass house, eating all this rich-ass food, while Rombu and I live off ramen like peasants. You've already forgotten us for the bourgeoisie, haven't you? I haven't forgotten you for the bourgeoisie, Tommy protested. I don't know, Tommy. Your sweater looks more expensive than half our closet back home combined, Rombu pointed out, reaching over to tug at the heavy knit fabric. Rich boy Tommy, Tubbo teased, giving Tommy a shit-eating grin. Sorry, but when the revolution comes, I'm going to have to guillotine you. Letting out a fake gasp, Tommy clutched at his shirt dramatically. I can't believe my own best friends would do this to me. Look, man, we gotta eat the rich. I don't know what to tell you. Ronbu chimed in, his grin matching Tubbo's. Groaning, Tommy buried his face in his blanket to hide his smile. Even if his friends were being annoying, he had missed this so much. Just the stupid back and forth the three of them would have, back when things weren't so complicated between them. It felt like the world between them had finally fallen back into balance, like everything was back to normal. And for the trio, it was. They spent the rest of the day holed up in Tommy's room, Ron Boo occasionally teleporting out to grab snacks or board games for them to play together. They joked around, caught up on how things had been going in the time they'd been apart, and really just enjoyed being back as a group. It was like an ache Tommy hadn't even realized was there had disappeared, letting him breathe easier than he had in ages. But even though one thorn had been removed from his side, there was still another one buried deep in his chest. Despite how much fun he had just hanging out in bed with Tubbo and Ronbu the whole day, he found himself missing Wilbur. Not counting the whole half-conscious reveal that he was Siren, Tommy hadn't had a proper conversation with Wilbur since the night he'd been kidnapped. He missed sitting with him as he practiced his songs, or curling up on the couch with him to watch movies, or just listening to him ramble about the random shit that came to his head. It was strange to go this long without seeing him, and even though Tommy had a whole slew of complicated emotions towards the man right now, he just missed when none of that mattered, before his suspicions had been confirmed. Back when Wilbur was just Wilbur, his best friend, his brother. Was Wilbur like a brother to him anymore? The ache in his chest told him yes, but Tommy wasn't sure. And he was scared to really think about what that could mean for the future if the answer turned out to be no. Tebo and Ronbu were a great distraction to keep him from focusing too much on these problems. But distractions couldn't last forever. That night... Tubbo and Ronbu told him that they needed to go out and patrol Eastside, as Nuke and Dender hadn't been seen since the night Tommy was rescued. Tommy argued that it was too dangerous, with it being so soon after his rescue, but the two reassured him they'd be extra careful. If they saw even the slightest flash of a hero in the distance, 
Ranbu promised he'd teleport them back to the house, because neither of them wanted to risk getting in a fight when Tommy was still too weak to heal anyone. They changed into their vigilante outfits and waved goodbye to Tommy as Ranbu teleported them out into the streets, leaving Tommy alone in his room, with nerves bouncing around his chest. He knew Tubbo and Ranbu would be fine. They'd gone on countless patrols before without having issues, and they were going to be extra careful this time. No, it wasn't them he was worried about. It was that he no longer had anything to distract him. He tried to keep himself busy. At first, he tried listening to music on his phone, but nearly half his Spotify library at this point were songs Wilbur had recommended to him. Then he tried booting up his GameCube so he could play Animal Crossing, before remembering that Wilbur had been the one to give the old GameCube to him. Eventually, he resorted to just scrolling through Twitter mindlessly. There were a few news reports talking about some reported fight at a warehouse in South Bay regarding Tommy's rescue, but there had been no confirmed sightings as to which heroes and villains were present. Fairly typical for the useless media, if you ask Tommy. It was nearly midnight when Tommy heard footsteps outside his door, which was just barely cracked open. He paused the TikTok he was watching about a hedgehog so he could listen closer, and saw a flash of brown come from outside. Tommy resisted the urge to sigh as he realized what was going on. He should just get it over with. He wasn't going to get any peace until he jumped headfirst in the water, no matter how cold it might be. Will, stop fucking creeping outside my door and just get in here! Tommy called out, wincing at how his voice slightly wavered. The pacing steps froze. Sorry, I didn't mean... Shit, I'll just go. Wilbur called back. Tommy huffed. No, get your ass in here. We need to talk. Another pause. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Now hurry up before I change my mind. Tommy grumbled, trying to shove down the fear making his heart pound in his chest. There was another beat of silence, and then the door to his room slowly creaked open. Wilbur poked his head in, and Tommy immediately flashed back to being on the roof, pain making his head spin as Wilbur's face stared out at him where Siren had just been a moment before. Wilbur looked terrible right now, to say the least. There were dark bags under his eyes, and his hair was a complete wreck, as if he'd completely given up on his complicated hair routine. He was dressed in a loose sweatshirt and sweatpants, and honestly, it looked like he hadn't gotten out of bed in days. Though, to be fair, Tommy doubted he looked much better. Where are Tubbo and Ronbu? Wilbur asked, glancing around the room. They're out patrolling east side. Didn't want to let Nuke and Enda disappear from public eye for too long, Tommy explained. Nodding, Wilbur made his way into the room awkwardly shuffling towards the chair that was still settled next to his bed from the day before. Wilbur seemed to be trying to avoid Tommy's eyes, but there was some complicated emotion on his face that Tommy couldn't place. It was like he was guilty, but also on the verge of tears, but also relieved? All at once? Tommy didn't understand it. But instead of asking, he just waited for Wilbur to sit down. Then, once he had settled... Tommy realized he had no fucking clue where to go from here. Shit. Maybe he should have thought this through a bit more. Hey. Tommy said quietly, for lack of knowing how else to start this. Hi. Wilbur replied, keeping his eyes on his lap as he wrung his hands together. Things fell silent between them again. So far, going great. Tommy was an idiot. It was much, much harder than Tommy had expected it to be just to sit there with a straight face with Wilbur only a few feet away from him. There were so many thoughts and emotions swirling in his head, it felt like a hurricane had started up inside his mind. He was angry. He was sad. He was hurt. But he was also just so fucking happy to see Wilbur again. A small part of Tommy desperately wanted to reach out and hug him but he kept his arms firmly at his sides. 
After taking a few moments to think over what to say, he figured starting with the obvious made the most sense. So you siren, Tommy said, bringing his knees to his chest. Wilbur nodded. Yeah, I am, he answered, pushing his hair back from his face. I... I wanted to tell you. I tried telling you several times, actually. But Techno and Phil were really strict about making sure I didn't reveal my identity, because we didn't want to put you in danger. Tommy thought back to their conversation on his second night at the soot house, when Tommy was so dizzy from healing Nemesis he could barely stand up straight. How Wilbur had confessed he was keeping something from Tommy, and Tommy had replied that he was keeping something from him, too. The irony of that. I'm not mad you didn't tell me you were Siren. Tommy started, resting his chin on his knees. I understand why you couldn't tell me that. You guys were just trying to keep me safe. Wilbur snorted, but it wasn't out of humor. It was more bitter than that. Yeah, look how that turned out. Tommy rolled his eyes. It was good you guys didn't tell me. Four or four used his freaky fucking powers to spy on my dreams. And if I'd known your identities, he probably would have seen it. Wait, 404 used his dream interrogation on you? Wilbur asked, something pained edging his tone. Tommy nodded, and Wilbur's face fell. Shit, I'm... I'm so sorry, Tommy. I've heard stories about what 404 can do. I can't imagine how nightmarish that must have been for you. Clenching his jaw, Tommy pressed his face into the blankets over his legs. I don't want to talk about his dream shit, he muttered, before reaching his right hand over to pinch the skin on his left palm. There was a sharp sting, and Tommy took a breath to remind himself again that this was real. Maybe I'll tell you later, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Yet, yeah, no, of course. Wilbur agreed, although he still seemed upset. Whatever. Not the focus of the conversation right now. Tommy pinched himself a little harder before forcing himself to let go of his palm. Taking another shaky breath, Tommy thought of the next burning question in his head. One of the main thoughts that had been circulating in his mind since he first let himself fully accept that Wilbur was Siren. Like I said, I'm not pissed that you hid your identity from me. Tommy repeated, staring at the small bead of blood on his palm from where he'd broken the skin pinching himself. But you took advantage of the fact that I didn't know who you were under the mask. Siren asked me what I thought about Wilbur, and it just... I don't know, I guess I just want to know if this was all some fucking game to you. Tommy asked, wincing when his voice cracked at the end. There was a sharp intake of breath from Wilbur, but Tommy didn't look up to meet his eyes. What? Was it real? Tommy pushed, pulling his knees closer to his body. You and me being friends. The whole brother shit, was that real? Or were you just trying to keep your healer close by? A beat of silence passed, with Tommy's heart racing in his ears. He risked a glance up at Wilbur, and saw he was staring at him with one of the most heartbroken expressions he'd ever seen Wilbur make. Tommy. Wilbur whispered, reaching out to grab his wrist squeezing it gently. None of it was fake. I swear on my life, I did not befriend you for any reason to do with your healing. I just genuinely thought you were fun to talk to. Then I got to know you better and you just... You got me. And I got you. We just clicked, you know? Nodding, Tommy lifted his head a little bit from his knees. They had clicked so well. It was like they had already known each other for years. Sure, he'd technically met Siren before he met Wilbur, but he had only talked to Siren twice. And one of those times, he was passed out for most of their time together. No. Tommy had gotten to know Wilbur first. And Wilbur was right in saying that they just clicked together. Like puzzle pieces. I swear on my life. I wasn't even planning on telling Phil and Techno about you until Phil got shot that night. Wilbur continued, when Tommy didn't respond. And then I just panicked because I didn't know how badly Phil was injured. I didn't plan to use you as a healer again, it just happened. 
but that's not why I became friends with you, I promise. Tommy winced at the mention of the night Phil was shot, his mind flashing back to the security footage of Siren. You know, Dream showed me some security footage from that night, Tommy said softly, now watching Wilbur's face. When you were fighting those cops at the warehouse. Wilbur paled. You saw what I did? Yeah, Tommy whispered. You told all those men to kill each other. Wincing, Wilbur let go of Tommy's wrist. I did, yeah. Tommy took a shaky breath. Of course the footage was real, but some part of him had been hoping it was fake. That dream had somehow doctored it. But no, it was real, and Wilbur just admitted it. Why? Tommy asked after another beat. You didn't have to kill those guys. You could have just made them fall asleep. Clenching his jaw, Wilbur nodded. You're right. I could have done that. The truth is, I just didn't think of it. He admitted, wringing his hands again. Like I said, when Phil got shot, I panicked. I could tell it was bad, but there was so much going on, there was no way for me to tell just how bad it was. I didn't know if he was dying or if it just grazed him. All I knew was that I had to take care of the police officers left behind, and I just got angry. They could have killed my dad, and I was fucking pissed. So the order just slipped out, without me really thinking about it. Somehow, the confession was both a relief and a horrible weight on Tommy's shoulders at the same time. On the one hand, Wilbur knew full well what he did was wrong, but he'd done it out of fear and anger for his father. His family had been hurt, and he retaliated. Tommy understood that. That he had killed so many people. Only one of those officers had shot Phil, but all of them paid with their lives. Wilbur hadn't even thought twice about killing people, as if their lives just meant nothing to him in that moment. Tommy felt vaguely sick as he met Wilbur's eyes again. Do you regret it? Tommy asked. I do. Wilbur nodded. I... I've killed before, but never that many at once. I barely slept for the rest of the week after that happened. Letting out a shaky breath, Tommy nodded. There was another question burning in his mind, but he didn't know if he wanted the answer to it. But now was the time to hash these things out. He either discovered the truth now, or he was never going to. Can you stop killing people? Tommy whispered, feeling like a little kid, asking if he could skip school that day. This time, Wilbur was silent for a long moment. He stopped wringing his hands, instead staring at the ground, with Tommy practically able to hear the storm in his mind. As the seconds ticked on, he squeezed his eyes shut, before opening them again and letting out a breath. Wilbur glanced up to meet Tommy's eyes through the curls falling in his face. No. While I can try to keep from losing control of my emotions like that again, I can't promise I'll never kill someone again. Not in my line of work. It was a confession. An apology. A plea. Tommy heard all the different tones in Wilbur's words. The infallible truth in his voice. This was the way things were in the world of villains and heroes. People died, and no pleas of Tommy's were going to change it. When Tommy didn't say anything for a long moment, Wilbur spoke again. Is that a deal-breaker? He whispered, fear dripping from his voice. I understand if it is. If you don't want anything to do with me because of this. Was this a deal-breaker? Tommy wanted to say yes. He really wished he could open his mouth and say that yes, this was too far for him. He had already stretched his moral boundaries enough healing the syndicate, but if innocent people were going to continue to be harmed, then he wanted nothing to do with the villains. That's what he should say. That was the right thing to do, and Tommy had always said he was trying to do the right thing. But Tommy knew the truth. And as much as he hated to admit it, 
Wilbur deserved to hear it. No. Tommy whispered, twisting his fingers into the blankets. I should say it is. I know I should, but I can't, because I'm too fucking selfish. Sitting here, Tommy could see exactly why Flame had done what he'd done. Why he had refused to turn Dream and 404 in, despite not condoning them kidnapping Tommy. As much as he wanted to resent Flame for refusing to help him, Tommy couldn't, because he understood it now. Dream and 404 were Flame's family, and even if he didn't approve of what they were doing, he was too selfish to live in a world without them by his side. Tommy was the same way. He was too selfish to cut Wilbur off, to leave behind the syndicate and go back to the life he had before. The syndicate was his family now. Wilbur was his family. The idea of leaving was too painful for him to bear. Well, my brother will, Tommy said, his voice cracking. I can't cut you off like that even if I wanted to. And suddenly, Tommy leaned towards Wilbur, arms outstretched with Wilbur meeting him halfway. He pressed his face into Wilbur's shoulder and hugged him as tightly as he could, wanting to sob in relief at how good it felt to just be back with his brother again. Maybe he was selfish, but he could be okay with that. Wilbur squeezed him just as tight, burying his face in Tommy's hair and holding him like he was afraid Tommy was going to disappear at any moment. I, I don't deserve this, Wilbur told him, sounding rough. I don't deserve to be your brother. I'm not a good person, not after the shit I've done. Tommy scoffed into Wilbur's sweater and pulled him closer. Shut up, he said into the fabric. I chose you as my family and I don't go back on that shit. You're my brother whether you like it or not. Wilbur let out a wet laugh, bringing one hand up to run through Tommy's hair. Fuck, I've missed you so much. I'm sorry for everything. The lying, the tricking you into telling me what you thought of me, letting you get hurt. I'm so fucking sorry for all of it. I missed you too, you idiot. Tommy told him. I don't know if I forgive you for all that shit just yet, but I'm back now and you're not going to be able to get rid of me, dickhead. I'm going to hold you to that if you get kidnapped again. Wilbur joked, and Tommy could feel his laughter reverberate through his chest. But seriously, I promise that I'm going to work every day to make sure I deserve to be your brother. Because you deserve the best family possible, Toms. <sighs> Fuck. Wilbur, that bastard couldn't just say shit like that. Tommy had already been fighting to hold back tears, but that broke the dam entirely. Tommy cried into Wilbur's shoulder, so many emotions running through him at once. Happiness, relief, guilt, sadness. Tommy knew he was being selfish, but he couldn't bring himself to care, because he had just missed his brother so much. This was his family now. Phil had said that if Tommy wanted it, Tommy could be theirs. He wanted it. Even if it was selfish of him, he wanted it so badly. Eventually, after Tommy stopped crying, Wilbur went to his room and came back with his guitar on hand. He settled down on the bed next to Tommy, strumming out a few tunes while Tommy played Animal Crossing on the GameCube, with Wilbur making a game out of trying to match the town music playing in the game. When Tubbo and Ronbu came back from their patrol, they found Wilbur and Tommy both passed out on Tommy's bed, with the GameCube still turned on. Tommy had his head resting on Wilbur's chest, and Wilbur had an arm protectively laid over his shoulders. Ronbu turned off the TV, while Tubbo moved Wilbur's guitar so it was no longer half hanging off the bed. Then they shut the lights off in the room, and headed downstairs to remake their bed on the couch. And finally, for the first time in days, the night was peaceful. 